thank you very much. Uh, it's a uh, honor, as well as being a little um, forbidding, to be representing uh, economics at this conference. Um, the uh, support of the Hausdorff Center for Economics and Economic Theory is, uh, has been very important over the years, uh, and it's great to see that it's continuing to play a central part. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some uh, joint work with Dirk Bergerman and Raphael Vieille on uh, a strategic topology on information structures. Uh, I, my ambition for today is that I will uh, convince you that uh, there is an economic question uh, that is somewhat mathematically interesting. Uh, uh, if, I, if I manage to get that across, uh, I think I will have succeeded. Okay, so a key ingredient of game theory, uh, and game theory is key to modern economic theory, but a key ingredient of game theory is the information structure. What do I mean by the information structure? Well, if I have a group of players playing a game, uh, it's going to matter what are players' beliefs and higher-order beliefs uh, about the game that they're playing, uh, i.e., more specifically, what, do indiv what, do e what does each player believe about the game, what do they believe that other players believe about the game, and so on. The space of all information structures is going to be an interesting mathematical object. And uh, it's also, I think, an object that is of increasing interest to economists. Uh, as Sven alluded to, a bunch of my research has been sort of pushing the idea that beliefs and higher-order beliefs are important in applied economic analysis of strategic situations. At a more uh, theoretical level, um, you know, it used to be information economics, the study of information economics is like 50 years old, years old in economics, and it used to be that people would study information in a very parameterized form. They would come up with some very simple model of information, but in recent years, there has been a big interest in taking uh, a more uh, abstract perspective, allowing for all possible information structures and that's where this talk is going to fit in a little bit. Uh, so the question that I'm going to uh, talk about today is we're going to ask, what is the coarsest topology on information structures that is going to generate continuity of equilibrium behavior? Okay, so we care about information structures uh, because of how it's going to influence how people are going to play a game. Uh, uh, and therefore, when we look at this big space of information structures, how we look at it, what is the relevant notion of closeness of information structures should correspond to uh, what the implications are for strategic outcomes in the game. Okay? I guess I think that it is an insightful and interesting question in its own right to understand what's the way of thinking about this big space of information structure, what matters. Somehow the answer to the question uh, delivers some information, some uh, information to me as an analyst about what is important about information structures. Uh, but in addition, um, knowing what the right topology is, is going to be important for a bunch of applied economic questions. And I will, that will not be the focus of my talk today, but I will uh, maybe come back at the end to talk about some implications uh, of our results. All right. <clears throat> so here's the answer to the question, to go straight to the punchline before I formalized anything, um, so you don't know quite what I mean. But uh, here's the answer, just so we know the general direction we're going. Uh, talking about information structures, an old idea 
uh, from a paper in 1989 is that something that's going to be important in strategic behavior is the concept of approximate common knowledge. Okay, so just by background, we say that an event is common knowledge if everybody knows it's true and everybody knows that everybody knows it's true and so on. So Mondrad and Samet said the right notion of approximate common knowledge is to say that an event is approximate common knowledge if for some p close to one, some probability close to one, everybody believes the event with probability at least p, everybody believes with probability at least p that everybody believes it with probability at least p, and so on. Okay, so uh, may sound a tiny bit uh, uh, esoteric, but it's going to turn out that this is important. Okay, and our conclusion is going to be that two information structures are close if each information structure assigns high ex ante probability, so the information structure is going to uh, include a uh, probability measure over possible states of the world, and this uh, two information structures are close if each of them assigns high probability uh, to their being approximate common knowledge in the sense described above that the interim beliefs, that is, there's a prior probability distribution over states, but, the question, but then we're going to be talking about what each player believes about other players. We're going to call that an interim belief. It's going to be a conditional belief. So the information structures are close. If there's high probability that there's approximate common knowledge, that those interim beliefs are close. Okay, so that's the question and answer, and we'll spend... Uh, uh, a fair bit of time defining formally, mathematically, what that means. All right. So what I want to do in the talk is uh, sort of cut to the chase in terms of that result. So I'll describe the setting. Uh, so uh, describe those definitions, describe what a game is, in particular describe what a game is, describe what the space of all information structures is, which has an uh, interesting history, um, talk about what equilibrium is, what a theory of behavior for a given game and information structure is. That's going to be the setting we're working with. And then I'm, we're going to, I'm going to pose and answer the main question. OK? Uh, I will postpone what I can spend a lot of time on talks in economic audiences, uh, spend a long time discussing modeling choices. I could have done this or that when talking about equilibrium or information structures. We, we've explored that, but I won't focus on that. I will hopefully briefly mention applications at the end. And on the grounds, the, the uh, talks that I've seen so far in this conference uh, give a long description of the background to the question, which uh, is, I think, an excellent way to structure a talk, and certainly an excellent way for uh, me to get the most out of the talk. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about prior work in my talk, because I'm not sure that uh, that would be particularly helpful for this audience. But at the end, it's actually a um, uh, a possible contribution of the work that I'm talking about, that it actually ties a whole lot of disparate looking results together. Okay. So here is the uh, setting uh, that we're going to be talking about, so in particular the definitions of all those uh, ideas that I splashed in words earlier. Okay, so suppose we fix a set of players, a finite set of players I, and a finite set of payoff relevant states, okay, possible states of the world that are going to matter for their choices. 
I will be talking about a base game, which is going to specify uh, what the strategic situation is for these players um, for each possible payoff relevant state, so without describing an information structure. Okay, so the base game is going to specify for each player a finite set of actions, AI, and for each player uh, a utility function that says what is the value to player I, um, what is his utility if a given uh, if he chooses a given action from the set AI, if all the other players choose an action profile from the product set A minus I, the product of possible actions for them, and the state turns out to be uh, some particular element of capital theta. Okay, so that's a utility function. We're going to focus on a bounded utility function. So I'm going to be talking about... Uh, results that hold for all games, but when I talk about for all games, it's going to be for a fixed uniform bound on possible payoffs. Yes. Uh, yes, sorry. Standard notation in economics that's unnecessarily mysterious. So uh, we sometimes write A minus I to mean the product over j not equal to i of a j. So an element a minus i in a minus i is a vector i uh, welcome questions. The more uh, uh, specific they are. I'm sure there will be other things where I just am writing something that looks odd to you. All right. <clears throat> Is that clear? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about information. So... The first thing I want to talk about is hierarchies of beliefs. That is, if people are engaged in a strategic situation, as I said in words, we're going to worry about not just their beliefs, but also what they believe about other people and so on. Um, so I'm going to need to uh, formally discuss what, it, what higher order beliefs or hierarchies of beliefs are. Okay, so let's recursively define sets uh, TI, calligraphic TI for each player is going to be uh, defined, it's going to be a vector defined recursively as follows. So uh, we'll let first order types of player I just be a dummy set. Let the, f sorry, the zeroth order types of player I be a dummy set. The uh, first order types of player I are going to be the set of probability distributions over theta. Those are his first order beliefs. Then we're going to recursively define his mth order beliefs for every M. So we can talk about his, uh, yes. And we'll define them recursively by saying, well, once you've defined his M minus one order beliefs, his mth order beliefs are going to be a description of what are his m minus one order beliefs, and we're going to add on a belief over the m minus one order beliefs of the other players and the state of the world. But we're going to impose the restriction that the marginal of player i's nth order beliefs over the m minus tooth order beliefs cross theta have to be equal to the m minus oneth beliefs that we're specifying here. Okay, so that's a bit of a mouthful. But this is simply a way of describing what are his beliefs at every level 
The slight complication here is that when we describe his beliefs at the nth level, they're going to uh, entail a belief over lower levels, and it had better be the case that his nth level beliefs are consistent with his m minus one level beliefs. That's what we're building in here. I'm sorry? Oh, the set of probability distributions. I really need these questions, obviously. <laughs> All right. So the set of hierarchy, hierarchies of beliefs is going to be the set of sequences uh, of that form specifying your nth order beliefs at every level uh, with the property that if I truncate that sequence up to level m bar, that is a coherent uh, set of beliefs up to the nth level, uh, as defined above. Okay, so all this is just saying there is a natural way of describing all possible hierarchies of beliefs that a player might have. Okay, and if you think, we're, we are going to think, that players are rational and uh, form probabilistic expectations, uh, we're saying this is a, a sufficiently rich space to describe what all their relevant beliefs are. They have to have beliefs over theta because they care about payoffs in the game they're playing, but they care about what other people are doing, so they're also going to care about other people's beliefs and so on. Uh, because the nth level belief, uh, we said, is a belief over the the nth level beliefs include a description of the nth, m minus one level beliefs and a belief that he has over the m minus one beliefs and theta. Uh, but if we now specify, as we do in the next line, if we now specify uh, the uh, so we're adding on, we specify the whole sequence, so we're adding on an nth order belief, okay, we want that to be connected with the levels that came before. So the m minus one level belief of player i had a belief over the m minus tooth level, and this is just saying that the nth level has beliefs over the m minus one level that are consistent with what came before. So this is just a consistent, so if I forgot that, consistency condition, this would be a description of possible hierarchies of beliefs where you don't require there to be any connection between different levels of beliefs, but these, we're adding in the restriction that your higher level beliefs are coherent with your lower level beliefs. Yes, I guess I didn't write that down, but I mean the coherent. I described the iterative procedure, and the TI M bar is the set of coherent M folder beliefs. So the set of guys that satisfy these properties up to level M. All right, so that's the hierarchies of beliefs. Um, the suppose now. We, uh, we can talk about a universal state space. That should say universal. Don't know what happened there. A universal state space omega consists of a description 
of what are the hierarchies of beliefs of each player. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep using this product notation. So we're going to be writing T without a subscript for the product across players of their uh, hierarchies of beliefs. So the universal space, so an uncertainty space that includes everything that we care about, is a description of the hierarchies of beliefs of each player and the state of the world. Okay? So... Uh, we can think about the product topology on the space of hierarchies of beliefs, that is, the product across different levels. So we're going to be saying that uh, what's happening in the tails of these iterated beliefs doesn't matter so much uh, in this notion of convergence. Okay, And I will later be referring to a metric for the product topology. So a metric that induces the product topology on the hierarchy spaces and the discrete topology on states of the world. Okay, so uh, a classic paper for us by Mertens and Zamiya showed that if I fix a hierarchy of beliefs tau i, there is going to be a unique belief tau i star uh, corresponding to it, that is a belief over the infinite hierarchies of others and the state of the world with the property that the uh, nth order belief, sorry, the nth order uh, components of the hierarchy of belief tau i correspond to uh, the beliefs of the uh, tau i star, which is in this different space, it's a probable distribution over the whole infinite hierarchies, uh, so tau i m uh, is equal to the marginal probability of tau i star over mth minus one beliefs and the state of the world. Okay, so this uh, can be proved by uh, Kolmogorov. It just says that knowing beliefs over every level of the hierarchy is going to pin down the, uh, 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 in, an infinite level belief, a belief over the whole infinite hierarchy. Okay? Uh, this result, I guess I'm not giving references here. So, Matenzamiya. Uh, did the mathematical formulation of this problem about 20 years before uh, Hassani um, somewhat more informally made the point that you could think about representing any situation in which there's incomplete information, different players are unsure about some features of the game and they don't know... Uh, what is the uncertainty that other players have about the structure of the game, people tended to think that this made game theoretic analysis useless before Hassani, slightly crude statement, but that the fact that you needed to have a complete description of the game that was commonly understood, Hassani said, no, you can always think about a description of the state of the world in terms of this universal type space in which you embed any beliefs and higher order beliefs that people have. It may be hard to analyze in this big space, but the point is that there is this abstract object that could capture anything that you wanted to capture. Okay? Now, that object, the universal state space, we don't yet have a probability distribution over the state space. Why? All we defined are what I'm going to call interim beliefs. That is, each, uh, you know, for each hierarchy, each type, Hassani introduced the name type, 
for each hierarchy or each belief about others. So I'll start using that language. So uh, in this construction, each type has a belief over the types of others and the state of the world, but we haven't said anything about a probability distribution, an ex-ante probability distribution over the state space. We've only defined what I'm going to call interim beliefs, or you can think of them as conditional beliefs. What are your beliefs conditional on your realized type? Okay. So an assumption that we make uh, all the time, or I should say most of the time, so people do do analysis without it sometimes, but most of the time we make what is called the common prior assumption. That is, we make the assumption that uh, even though there may be asymmetric information, some people may have reason to believe something and other people haven't learned that, so they don't have reason to believe it. So people may have different beliefs, but the common prior assumption says that uh, whatever their interim beliefs are, they could have been derived by conditioning on some underlying state space. So people condition on something uh, in order to get their interim beliefs, but this is in a space in which there is a prior probability distribution. Okay, so the common prior assumption in this context is going to say uh, players' beliefs and higher order beliefs, or their interim beliefs, as I'm going to call them, uh, are conditional beliefs for some prior distribution over the universal type space, a common prior distribution that everybody could agree on. Okay? So an information structure in this... Uh, so for me, an information structure is simply going to be a prior over uh, states of the world with my notation that delta of omega is the set of probability measures on omega. Okay? But it's not just any prior. The prior has to be consistent on all the... Uh, uh, with the conditional or interim beliefs that are identified with a particular uh, type. Okay, so an information structure is a prior with the important property that there's a version of the conditional probability for I, that is the probability uh, over everything else, conditional on what his type or hierarchy is, uh, with the property that his nth order beliefs, as defined earlier, are in fact the marginal of this uh, conditional belief over the m minus one-th uh, hierarchies and the state. Okay? So that's my definition of an information structure. Okay? So I'll write calligraphic P for the set of all information structures. Okay? Now, if I combine the base game, what I defined as the base game, calligraphic G, the actions and the payoffs, if I combine it with an information structure, which is a probability distribution over the universal state space, we get what we call a game of incomplete information. It's a game in the usual sense with the uh, subtlety that payoffs depend on a state of the world, and uh, we're allowing, through this universal state space, uh, players to have arbitrary beliefs and higher-order beliefs about parameters of the game. Okay? And we, uh, economic and game theorists, have spent a lot of attention analyzing games of incomplete information. Uh, and a key question to ask is, if you take a game of incomplete information, what do we think is rational behavior in this game? 
Okay? Uh, so let me describe the solution concept that I'm going to be using. It's not quite standard for reasons that I'll explain in a second. So the basic idea of equilibrium is we're going to say that it's a description of behavior with the property that every player uh, has an incentive to play according to that description of behavior given his beliefs. Okay, so we, we need that the description of behavior is consistent with rationality for every player, maximizing expected utility. Okay, so in my language, how are we going to describe that? Well, we're going to say uh, we can think about a decision rule which says what is going to be the probability distribution over action profiles induced you know, on the universal state space so as a function of the uh, types of the players or the hierarchies of the players and the state, the, the payoff state. Okay, we're, we're allowing A, again, is supposed to be the product set, so the product of all actions. So we're saying there is some probability distribution over the profiles of actions of the players. Okay, we'll say that a decision rule is epsilon obedient if for each player i uh, and for some uh, regular conditional probability for that player, uh, this inequality is satisfied. So I'm going to be doing one thing here, one important thing here, which is that I'm not going to be requiring rationality. I'm going to weaken the assumption of rationality to epsilon rationality. Instead of saying that choosing a best response, I'm allowing them to choose something which is a not a best response as long as it is within epsilon of a best response. Okay, so what is this integral supposed to be saying? Well, it's saying when you integrate over your uncertainty about the hierarchies of other players and the payoff state and the actions of other players, A minus I, that's what the left hand says, uh, but it's looking at the difference between player I choosing action AI and choosing some other action AI prime. And this is saying that a player uh, AI has to be a best response if AI is what he's supposed to be playing under this decision rule that we're hypothesizing might be an equilibrium. Okay? So... Uh, epsilon obedience captures the idea of every player being almost surely uh, rational, choosing what maximizes his expected utility. The thing that he's playing is maximizing his expected utility, or at least within epsilon of maximizing his utility. Um, yeah, if, it's, if he's supposed to be playing AI, he wants to play AI. Okay, that's what epsilon obedience is requiring. Now, one subtlety that you might have spotted is that my description of a decision rule is allowing, as a function of the, these universal states, a probability distribution over profiles of actions, and they could be correlated. We're allowing for the possibility that players' actions are correlated. However, we're only allowing a very limited form of correlation here, because we're going to impose the restriction that the decision rule is belief invariant. That is, that for each player I uh, and each action, the uh, belief that he has over the probability distribution over his actions, conditional on his hierarchy of beliefs, does not depend on other players' hierarchies in the state of the world. Okay? So this is allowing for some correlation in behavior, but not too much, because from player I's point of view, there isn't correlation with other players' actions. Okay? So our solution concept, and I apologize for the number of words here, is going to be belief invariant based correlated equilibrium. So, uh, 
So we can talk about an epsilon BIBCE if it's epsilon obedient and belief invariant. If epsilon is zero, we just say BIBCE. As I said, the subtlety is that there may be correlation in people's actions, but there's a sense in which it's not payoff relevant from player I's point of view. Uh, it's equivalent to the standard Bayes-Nash equilibrium solution concept that you might conceivably have heard about if you've uh, studied a bit of game theory with incomplete information. Okay, but with this tweak that we're allowing players to condition on correlating devices that are not payoff relevant in an appropriate sense. It's belief invariant Bayes correlated equilibria. Uh, um, Bayes, when people first started talking about uh, incomplete information games, they used Bayes as a qualifier to highlight the fact that you have beliefs over other players' types. It's kind of redundant in this name, but yeah. Okay. So um, there are reasons for studying this solution concept that I don't have time to get into, but let me just highlight two things. One is that BIBCE uh, always exists that I'm in the environment that I'm studying, but rather remarkably, Bayes-Nash equilibria don't exist without further restrictions on the information structure. Uh, and um, allowing information structures uh, with redundancies. So under this solution concept, the universal state space really is the as rich a description of the information structure you could be interested in, because if you had multiple copy, if you had types who had the same uh, hierarchies of beliefs, it wouldn't make any difference. Okay, so I'm running out of time. So let me get to the main result. So our universal space, you remember, was this product set. And now let me define uh, a p-belief operator, an object defined by Mondra and Samet, for any probability p and for any event in that space. Let's write b p of e for the set of states in that universal space with the property that every player assigns probability at least p to that event, okay? So for player I, where we're writing E minus I for the projection of the event E onto the types of others and the state of the world, which is what player I's beliefs are defined on, okay? So we could then talk about the nth order application of this operator. We're always going to be remaining within this set omega, and we'll say that the event E is common P belief if it is the intersection of all the uh, nth order p-belief statements, okay? An event on the universal type space is belief closed if all players assign probability one to an event whenever it's true. An information structure is minimal if there are no non-trivial belief closed subsets of that space. So a simple observation is that if I have two distinct minimal information structures, then they must be disjoint. Nonetheless, I'm going to want to talk about when two information structures that might be minimal, when are their interim beliefs close? Okay, so that's going to be a little bit subtle, but here's how it works. We'll define an epsilon neighborhood of a state to be states that are close in the product topology. So here, they're close in the metric that, uh, for the product topology. That's the neighborhood of states. We'll say the epsilon support of information structures is the union of uh, states who, uh, whose epsilon neighborhoods have positive probability under that prior. 
and we'll look at the intersection of information structures Epsilon supports. These will intersect in general. These will be the set of beliefs that have the property that they're close to some beliefs and the P and some beliefs and the P prime. Okay, so in general, we may have the support of P and the support of P prime being disjoint, but there will be uh, a, but if we look at an epsilon ball around the supports of P and P prime, they will intersect, and that's what we're calling uh, T hat of P P prime. Okay, so this approximate common knowledge topology is defined as follows. Say that the almost common knowledge distance between P and P prime is the smallest epsilon with the property that uh, each, under each information structure, the probability of the event that there is common one minus epsilon belief of interim beliefs being close is at least one minus epsilon. Okay, so there are three epsilons in there, uh, but that's what we need to have uh, closeness. So if this is small, yes, that's what I said. Okay, so that means that the common one minus epsilon belief of T hat epsilon is going to be a subset of the yellow, whatever you call it, um, uh, and is going to be contained in, the, in each of the epsilon supports. How it connects to the zero supports, don't know. Okay? So the approximate common knowledge topology is generated by open sets uh, using that distance. Okay, um, it is a metric topology, actually not using that distance, but we can tweak it to a somewhat more complicated version that satisfies the triangle equality, inequality, so it's a metric topology. Our object of interest is the set of outcomes, probability distribution over action profiles and states that can arise in a BIBCE. Okay, this is saying that we don't, really care about what players' beliefs and higher order beliefs are, the thing that matters to me as an economist is these outcomes, okay? So a BIBCE decision rule uh, and an information structure, P, are together going to induce a measure, what we'll call an extended outcome over action profiles types, and state of the world, our outcome of interest is going to be the marginal of that extended outcome on A cross theta. Okay? So, BIBC was a property of these decision rules, but we can now define BIBC of GP is the set of belief invariant uh, Bayes correlated equilibrium uh, outcomes. Okay? So O, G of P, is the set of outcomes that could arise in belief invariant Bayes correlated equilibria. Intuitively, we want to say that information structures are close if their BIBC outcomes are close in all games. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, we, this was the set of outcomes induced by BIBCE. Suppose we define uh, a slightly larger set of epsilon BIBCE outcomes, where we expand the set of outcomes in two ways. First of all, we require that they correspond to a decision rule which is only an epsilon BIBCE. And secondly, we require uh, that uh, this outcome is within epsilon in Euclidean distance. Remember, these are probability distributions over finite sets. Um, so we are, we are, this set, O epsilon, approximates the set of BIBC outcomes in an appropriate way. Okay, so we'll say that the strategic distance between two information structures is given by uh, the smallest epsilon 
such that the set of outcomes under one information structure is a subset of this epsilon expansion of the set of outcomes of the other uh, information structure for the same game, and vice versa. Okay? So, uh, with that notion of strategic distance, I can define the continuity properties that I'm interested in. First, I'm going to state a proposition that says that if two information structures are close in the almost common knowledge topology, then their equilibrium outcomes are close. So, formally, for every game and every epsilon, there exists a delta such that if they're delta close in the almost common knowledge technology, then in any game, I should have added that qualifier, for all games, the strategic distance between them is at most epsilon. Okay, the other direction of this argument says that we then show that if two information structures are not close in the almost common knowledge topology, then equilibrium outcomes are not close in some game. Okay, so this is saying that for every epsilon, if two information structures are more than epsilon apart in the almost common knowledge topology, then there exists a game such that the strategic outcomes are at least epsilon apart. Okay? So those two propositions together establish the claim that I started with, which is that the almost common knowledge topology is the coarsest topology generating continuity of strategic outcomes. So I have... Uh, got to the main result on time, I was hoping to say a little bit about the proof uh, in the spirit of uh, keeping to the timetable. Is it okay if I give a little verbal summary of the flavor? Two, two minutes. Three minutes. Okay. So, um, for the sufficiency part of the result, uh, Here's how the argument goes. We say, look, suppose we have a uh, BIBCE outcome in some game under some information structure. Suppose I take another information structure, which is epsilon close. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that BIBCE decision rule under the first information structure, I'm going to expand it a little bit uh, onto to cover the region where there is common one minus epsilon belief that the interim beliefs under the two information structures are close. Okay, so I will continuously extend the decision rule to this common one minus epsilon belief event. Okay? then I'm going to establish that that... Uh, uh, so then I'm going to look at the other information structure, P prime. I'm going to fix behavior on the approximate common knowledge event, look for an equilibrium with the modify game where I fix behavior on the approximate common knowledge event. There will exist such an equilibrium. And then I'm going to argue that that equilibrium of the modified game is going to be an epsilon equilibrium of the unmodified game, and that is the point in which I'm going to be using the approximate common knowledge. Because the fact that there's approximate common knowledge on an event means that if something is part of an equilibrium on that event, changing things outside, it will still remain an epsilon equilibrium on that event. Okay, and then the probability is going to add up right. So that's a general argument that almost common knowledge closeness is going to give you closeness in strategic outcomes. Okay, um, for necessity, uh, it's more complicated. Um, what I'm going to do is I've got to show you that if two information structures are far apart, I must be able to uh, show that there exists a game uh, if they're far apart, there exists a game, um, and uh, yeah, if they're not close in the almost common knowledge topology, then there exists a game where they're not close. So 
uh, my job is going to be to, dis to construct one game that has the feature that for those two information structures, their equilibrium outcomes are going to get, must be guaranteed to be different. Uh, so the construction that we do is going to have two components. First of all, we're going to use the fact that unless an event is uh, approximate common knowledge, that on the complement of an almost common knowledge event, you can have tales of higher order beliefs matter a lot. It can be very sensitive to tales of higher order beliefs. So I can create differences in behavior there. I also have to make sure that I create some seed that guarantees that behavior is different. Um, to create that seed, I have to also have, as part of the description of the game, what we call a, uh, a game with an iterated scoring rule where you get players, a finite game where you get players to report on a grid their nth order higher order beliefs, and if two information structures are not close, you can always find a level of beliefs where there's a positive probability that they will distinguish themselves. And I'll stop there. Thank you.